So I just got back from watching the Predator 2018 show and what can I say? I am very disappointed. First things first, I'm a fan of the Predator since I was a kid. I watched the first Predator and the second one at a time when I was like 9, 10 years old. It was a mix of horror, suspense and action all rolled into one that it left a deep impression on me and I think it deserves its place in pop culture reference even to this day. So the first Predator, let's all agree that it's an all-time classic starring Arnold Schwarzenegger and his band. Then, then came out the second Predator in a few years later, 1990, starring Danny Glover. Then you have several years later, I think about like more than a decade later, in 2004, there was Aliens vs Predator, the first time in the silver screen where the alien is pitted against the Predator. So you have Aliens vs Predator. Then, uh, I think we can all agree that the next one was pretty rubbish, uh, AVP required. This came out in 2008, but, but even then, it had its own charm. There are some things cool about it, like the wolf predator. You have like one predator that's a total badass going up against all these aliens. But I think it's critically panned because of its horrible plot and all the action scenes were all done in the dark, so it was pretty shitty. And then you have Predators 2010 this ragtag group of people throw into a jungle in the middle of nowhere. So it's kind of like a, a little bit of like a hawking back towards the first Predator movie, except that this one's taking place on a forest reserve, uh, game reserve planet. Okay, it was an okay show. I watched it, I, I enjoyed it somewhat, but uh, it couldn't uh, replace the first 1987 Predator. Now that brings us to the here and now. So from here point on, there's going to be some spoilers. First up, I'm not a professional or a full-time movie critic or review. I'm just like not a novel dude. Let's start with the overall premise, okay? I, I, I feel that the way the story is told is pretty poor. So you need to have some character to come up with some juxtaposition, if I can't think of a better word right now, to try to explain the motives of this first and a second predator. Uh, but I feel that the way it was explained, it was either sloppy or weak. And when I watched it, uh, I felt like, you know what, it's like, kind of like I've seen it before. Now that I think about it, yeah, because you know what, Predator vs Predator, that was done before in the 2010 Predators, okay? A fight taking place in suburban area, yeah, that was done in like AVP Requiem. And you would think that they would learn that mistake from AVP Requiem with the lighting and all that. I can barely tell what the fuck was going on. And I'm going to talk more about that in a short while. Next, let's talk about the overall feel when we watch the show. Okay, so sometimes when you watch a certain type of film or a certain type of show, you can tell it's, it's going to be like all fun comedy, it's all action shoot em up, it's thriller suspense, it's horror, but at least you know what you're watching and you know what you're paying a ticket for. But this, I don't know what to feel about it. Uh, are they trying to take themselves seriously or is this a, a goofy cut kind of uh, movie? I mean, let's look back at the 1987 one. Uh, Dutch, Arnold's character and his mercenaries, it's, it's pretty serious shit because they're there in the jungle, they're there to take out the gorillas, save the so-called hostage, which uh, they didn't do it, and then they try to bounce back to uh, their own uh, friendly territory and then they got stopped by something that's unknown. So you know this is serious shit. You, as the viewer, you're invested in what's going on. You feel for these characters. Same thing goes for Predator 2, where we follow Danny Glover's character uh, and his colleagues as they try to solve this mystery of this uh, super assailant or ninja assailant, which turns out to be a very otherworldly, uh, none other than a Predator himself. And then if you look at Predators 2010, that pretty much the same thing. This is some serious shit going on. We're in this fucking planet, uh, game reserve, and something out there is stalking us. So you feel that there's tension built up. But in this show, we don't feel any of that at all. Uh, that's it, there's no emotional investment in any of these characters or whatever the fuck is going on. You don't care who's gonna die or what. Now also, when you probably have watched the trailers like I did, they, they came up with quite a number of trailers to do their pre-marketing for the launch of the Predator into the movies. And they were putting all this, uh, I don't know, hip hop music bullshit, uh, trying to be like Suicide Squad. But that's it, I was pleasantly surprised that when I watched the film, they had played again the tribal soundtrack that you normally hear in the first and the second Predator. Now let's talk about the characters, okay? So prominently they featured the, what we call the loonies, okay? This bunch of units, uh, the, the unit, all right? That is supposed to tag with the protagonist, which is Makina, who's a sniper. Truth to be told, I, I don't find these guys memorable at all. I mean, if you watch the show uh, and you just came, came here and watched this video right now, uh, can you just tell me who those guys really are, one by one? 
I bet you can, all right? Me, I can probably just tell one guy, that's uh, Michael Key or, or Keegan, maybe because I've seen him on YouTube before from the Key and Peel channel, all right? And I think the fact that I saw Key in the trailer kind of lowered my expectation of the show already because I mean, I've got nothing against the guy or anything like that. He, he's a great uh, comedian in his own way. You know what, it's like kind of like casting Rowan Atkinson to a serious movie, if you know what I'm talking about. After that, uh, there's this one part they had this, uh, they recycled this line from the first Predator show, which is uh, get to the chopper, but they say get to the choppers. And they are, were actually referring to the motorbikes, okay, those motorbikes, the choppers. I, I don't know, I, I thought that was cringe, you know, I thought that was cringe. And speaking about one-liners, all right, I mean, at least in the first and the second Predator shows, they, they've got some memorable one-liners. They were not so cringe or cheesy. In fact, they, they sound a badass. Dylan, you son of a bitch. What's the matter? See how you got your pushing too many pencils? All right, you know, cool lines like that. But here, uh, I can't remember anything. So let's talk about the protagonist himself, Makina, right? The, the sniper, okay? Now, if you compare to the other protagonists, like, of course, Okay, let's accept this as fact right now. No one can top Arnold Schwarzenegger, period, okay? And then you've got Danny Glover. I know some people had criticized him or, or they were critical about his acting performance back then, but I think he deserves a spot up there at a legendary status. So, and then you've got uh, Predators and that's Adrian Brody, okay? But even then, uh, some people say that the Predators 2010 feels kind of bland somehow, but I thought it was an enjoyable show and I think uh, Adrian had portrayed his character pretty well. Now you've got this Makina guy, I don't know. I mean, I felt he was a cardboard character just like the others. So, that, that I mean, it feels like some Call of Duty guy just got casted in. And speaking of Call of Duty, if you look at all the mercenaries in the show, there's a lot of soldiers, there's a lot of gore, there's a lot of deaths on screen. Uh, if some of you like gore and blood and all that, it's gonna be pretty cool. There's, there's a high body count in this movie, okay? Compared to some of the previous shows. But, uh, you just can't have a notice that they're freaking stupid all these guys and black mercenaries call duty kind of guy i wouldn't be surprised they use like the same one two actors to uh, recycle for all these death scenes i wouldn't be surprised okay and then we've got this other guy sterling k brown acting uh, as will trager okay you see him at the early parts of the show it seems like just another uh, good scientist i think and after that he becomes the bad guy I think he was pretty stupid, especially in the death scene when he fight when he died. Uh, I wasn't clear about what the fuck just happened. Uh, I think everyone in the theater felt the same way as well. We we're like, uh, we weren't even sure whether this guy died or not because during the forest scene, is everything's all pitch dark and he's got this uh, plasma caster at a, at, on his shoulder, which it's kind of cool. A human being using it for the first time, and then uh, there was some chaos going on. Uh, I thought he survived it because I don't remember seeing him die. I did see something like. Uh, I wasn't sure whether he killed somebody or not. I wasn't sure about that. And then when the show ended, then we realized, oh, he actually died back there because I needed to get online to see what the fuck was going on. And it seems that someone else had reviewed the show and they, they spotted that. Apparently, this plasma caster was pointing at, at his own head because he was trying to target somewhere else. And he basically killed himself, all right? Because the plasma caster was shooting at his own head, which is fucking stupid. Then we've got Oliver Mann who plays the scientist and the soul... Uh, women in the whole entire group, which to be very frank, she started off as like the scientist, but after that she becomes like, just like the other soldiers, suddenly she could shoot and she could do all the stunts and all that, but you know what, uh, there were very very few uh, instances where she portrayed her traits as a smart scientist, so unfortunately she's a very one-dimensional character in this movie as well. So moving on, let's get into the plot, and boy, the plot is so fucking stupid. I mean, I know it's supposed to be popcorn fun, and I try my best to check my brain before entering the cinema, but this is really bad. Uh, I think... So let's start off with that first Predator, okay? The first Predator is that smaller Predator who came to Earth. Uh, he was being pursued by a, a bigger Predator, and... Apparently, as the plot unfolds, you learn that actually this first predator was a traitor to his own race and he wanted to bring salvation to mankind in the form of a weapon that could help the human beings even up the odds against the predators. But that doesn't make sense at all because when this guy, this predator, uh, woke up or escaped the uh, crash ship, the first thing he did was that he went on a killing rampage. The first, I mean, literally the first fucking thing he did was hang one of Makina's friends right off the bat and skin the fucker alive. That was the first thing he did, alright? How's that for a savior? Okay? Then the next part, uh, you're gonna see that 
the Makina's team will be pitted in a firefight against the bad guys, the bad human beings, which is led by Traeger, all right? And they also help get his uh, autistic son back, okay? So they went on a firefight. Uh, there are quite some deaths, on, especially on the bad guys. They have heavy casualties. And then once this uh, big predator got into the game, he was killing people uh, from both sides. And uh, he issued basically an ultimatum to all of them. And the next thing you know, they're all on the same team all of a sudden. I don't know how they can reconcile just like that, especially when Makina's team has been inflicting heavy casualties on Traeger's uh, mercenary team, all right? And suddenly, they're all the same thing, running to the forest together. I think what would be more realistic is that they continue killing each other no matter what, because there, there's so much at stake by now for both of these uh, groups that they'd be better off killing each other. And even if you look at their motivations for killing each other, especially uh, Traeger's uh, group of people, I think that's fucking stupid again, because, you know, like how they wanted to quickly dispose of uh, Oliver Munn's cycling character just because she knew a little bit. Yeah, I, I don't know what to say. Okay, now let's talk about this big predator that came later. So the first half of the act, you see that that first smaller predator, he gets killed off. All right, because now you've got a bigger predator in the game right now. And originally his mission is just to pursue that small predator and he, for, for all intents and purposes, he did achieve his mission objective. He killed the traitor and he blew up the ship. So mission accomplished, success. Now this next part doesn't make sense, all right? I'm, I'm not sure, maybe I miss out some things or there's just such a convoluted plot, I might miss a few things and I just watched it just once, all right? So now this big predator now has his eyes on the younger Makina, which is the, the protagonist's son because he's, uh, even though he's autistic, but he is gifted in other areas and the predators are trying to evolve. So this predator believes the next stage of evolution is to get this young boy's DNA so that they could be very, very smart. So. But the things that the Predator didn't know about this Makina boy until just like, what, one, two hours ago when, when he landed? So I don't know whether it's spontaneous or it's always been part of the plan, but I thought that was a pretty shallow plot if you ask me. And then this part, I still don't get it. The Predator dogs, okay? So the Predator dogs came under the big Predator, okay? So he unleashed these two Predator dogs. Uh, at one point, they pursued those, uh, the human beings, which is the loonies. And then uh, they, were, they, they were just... You know, at first it seemed intense for a while. I thought, whoa, oh boy, I think there's, there's going to be a, an interesting firefight or, or action scene going on, all right? So they got these two predator dogs like circling around the boy. Then they, the Lunis came just in time to save the boy and they were like shooting at, a do at the dogs and they were, they were like bulletproof and all that. But they were just staying there, okay? And then one of the dogs started acting, started moving after Makina. And Makina finished it off with, uh, by putting a grenade into the dog and, and the dog exploded, so the dogs did. But then the second dog was still there and suddenly they decided that the dog was uh, docile, all right? It was harmless. What the fuck just happened? I, I, did I miss something or what? But then if, if the dog has always been docile all this while, then why was the first dog hostile, okay? And aren't these dogs uh, answering to the big predator to help them track something going on, like track the boy? Uh, why is he not doing that? So it, it I, I don't know what the fuck went on. Suddenly this dog is now uh, swearing his allegiance to the human, the human group, which I don't know what the hell just happened. So this went on for the rest of the movie. We can assume that the dog survived, but I don't know what the hell just happened. All right, you tell me. Then there's the farmhouse plot. There's another action scene over there where uh, Traeger's team came down to ambush uh, Makina, Oliver Munn's character, and uh, they've got a boy uh, taken as well, but the rest of the team was dispersed to try to look for the chopper or, or some way to get out of it, which I thought that plot was very, very stupid in itself. That act was dumb. There was no reason for them to stay, and if they wanted to stay, they should all stay together, you know what I mean? But I don't know what the hell just happened. It seems that the pacing felt off. And another, it is another plot hole, okay? So towards the, the last scene, the, the big predator was going to take off with, the, with the, the little boy and the ship took off. So all the other characters, the, the surviving characters, except for Oliver Munn's character, they managed to board the ship. The two guys died, they got wasted. And then you've got Makina versus the predator for a while, which is not really much going on. The, the ship has flew off, crashed into the forest, and then it went quite a considerable distance. And just moments after they crashed, Oliver Munn's character was able to track them. All right, in a very, very short time. I don't even know how she got that. They didn't have any vehicles or anything like that whatsoever. And even then, it's a very dense forest. So I think there's another plot hole over there. And then let's talk about the, the, the ending here. I think it's a sequel bait. They might want to have a, a next predator or something like that, uh, where they managed to confiscate the survived 
artifact or item that the first predator left for human kind, which again, like I said just now, I, I thought that was really stupid. Uh, the predator wanted humankind to even out the odds, but he himself was going on a killing spree. I, I don't quite get that part. Okay, so one of the scientists was able to offer this thing, and this thing latched onto the scientist. It became like some kind of like like dead space or iron Iron Man suit, uh, looked like a predator but fit for human beings, and then the thing like uh, de transformed itself and went back to what it was. Uh, I thought that was I don't know. I, I felt cringe seeing that. I thought it was supposed to be cool, but that kind of technology, I feel it just doesn't belong in the Predator universe. I mean, I could go on and on. This is just what I think about the show. Uh, like I said, I'm not a professional reviewer and I don't do this full time. It's just something I feel strongly about. Hence, uh, I don't know, it's so bad. Uh, if I were to give it a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the worst, 10 being the best, I'd say I personally rate the Predator 3 out of 10. All right, that's just the way I feel about it right now. It can't hold a candle to all its predecessors. And uh, maybe it's slightly better than AVP requirement, but that's saying something, you know. I think even AVP was better than this. What the hell, man? So, if you watch the show, uh, just share with me what, what you think about the show. There's so many of these uh, stupid plots that uh, I might have laughed out. Like I said, just came out of the, the show. I'm just telling you right off, my, right off what I'm thinking right now. Uh, but... There you go. So my name is Admin. Thanks for watching. And talk to you the next time around if we and I have a lot in common, okay? In the, the movies that we watch. Take care.